So I'm going to go through what this community was like. We're a young movement. I want to talk about the last five years. That's all about this civic tech movement has been around in a meaningful way. Five years, half of the decade, right? Not even existing at the turn of millennium. So what did the last five years look like? How far have we come to be able to get here today? And what is it going to look like for the next five years, the rest of the decade? What is it possibly going to look like in 50 years from now? Well, I want to talk about what it's, it's been. So how many people, 100 people here, maybe? Does this look about 100, a little over 100? 120? Yeah. Okay. So 120 people here. It was, I think in 2012 was the Gapers block when they came by. 2012, uh, 2014, I think. And this is the one-year birthday. You remember this up there? The one-year birthday. 20, 30 people crammed into a room, couple floors up. 20, 30 people. That was a packed night. It was ungodly hot in those. I think I've presented the second most spot behind Derek uh, uh, for all hack nights. And when you, when you presented, you made a commitment that you were going to sweat <laughs> that night. I really mean that. You, it was a tight-fitting group. Now we moved into this space. Uh, Shy Hack Night has moved into this space. And the group has grown because it's uh, physically been allowed other folks come in. But right about the same time of that, that video, that very short video, is uh, the city of Chicago issued the executive order around open data. The city of Chicago, the first uh, municipality in the United States to ever have named a chief data officer. Now there's over 30 cities and, of course, uh, across the globe. But we also made a commitment around open data. So what does that look like? Since that time, that one-year birthday of Shy Hack Night, the, the initiation of a formal executive order, something with the power of law around open data. I stepped on something. Power law of open data. Well, one thing that's happened is, of course, the community has grown. From that very tight space of 30 people being very tight, there are people, people standing outside of the glass listening to the presenter. And now we're able to grow into this space. And what's key is that this has been a productive community. You come here and you talk about projects that you've done, you've talked about your passions, you've tried to educate each other. And that's key. When I look at other cities, when we go to other cities, there's other cities trying to mimic this. Full and through, trying to mimic this habit. Not New York City has been able to do it, not Los Angeles, not Barcelona, not London. But we've always been seeking to help each other. At the same time, the city of Chicago, <clears throat> we took a very fundamental analog issue such as potholes and we've been able to convert it so you can take a look at a pothole and you can use an app using an open API and you're able to report that pothole, pothole by taking a picture and submitting it to us. That was one of our first steps. By you being able to submit data, make it easier in a way that you want to through an app or through a phone or through a website. But then we took it yet another step further and we said we're going to start open source. We're going to have a GitHub account, github.com slash Chicago, right? One of the best GitHub account names, organizations, <laughs> you can possibly name. So we did that, and not only just make things open source that has been done by software developers, but when we started our predictive analytics program and trying to predict things across the city of Chicago, we also made the code that driver predictions, for instance, driving the predictions of where we think uh, restaurants are going to fail, food inspections, we made that code publicly available and challenged you. Can you do a better <coughs> job? And if you do a better job, we'll take your code and we'll use it, and you can have a direct impact on the city of Chicago and its 2.7 million residents, on the 16,423 restaurants in the city of Chicago, you can have that impact. Increasing the ability of our design to be able to make things easier to read and also to want to look at a city of Chicago website. And we still have many websites that are awful to look at. <laughs> By being able to take that same open data that we publish in a raw form and be able to translate it into a way that you can easily see with uh, our OpenGrid platform, which is an open source platform which displays open data, but that code is also used internally to drive our operational systems. So when you make a contribution to that code, when you critique that, you're also making a critique and you're making a contribution to programs that City of Chicago employees use on a day-to-day -day basis. <coughs> and we're relying on you, in particular, to get feedback on how these programs work, whether or not they work well for you, and what modifications we need to make to make it a better program. So it was just starting off with, well, can you submit a pothole to us? Uh, getting together, can you also now start contributing to the city, <coughs> leveraging technology and the tools that exist today? This is what volunteerism looks like in the 21st century. Instead of adopt a highway and soup kitchens 
it's pull requests and issues being open. And of course, the, the community here has even matured more. We're now again 120, 150 people are coming together. This is what an anniversary looks like now for Shai Hackney. Again, I'm not a leader of this, I'm a participant in the community. And we've, in the past year, we've been able to work together that no other city has been able to work with its respective community. As in the case of when we, and community members here were very interested in E. coli levels in Chicago's beaches. And because of that, because of that, the city of Chicago, my team, built out applications to better record what E. coli levels were on a day-to-day -day basis and record it on this website, which is internal, and then make that data publicly available, which in turn, data scientists here every Tuesday worked on trying to create a, and creating a predictive model, an open source predictive model, to predict E. coli, beach, or e. coli levels at Chicago's beaches. So taking that moment of working internally and having staff within the city of Chicago work to create things to reveal data to you, as we have been for the last four years, so we can make an improvement. But going forward, I've co-founded, the city of Chicago co-founded with Harvard University with a $3 million from a foundation, a network of CDOs called the Civic Analytics Network. And this is us getting together and talking about how we can collaborate amongst all of our cities, LA, San Francisco, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, uh, New Orleans, and the like. So if we really take this moment of you being able to contribute to City of Chicago projects, you being able to contribute to projects here, and those projects can be adopted elsewhere and governments are working together, it is possible that you're going to come here on a Tuesday night and you can make direct contributions to other cities in the United States and across the globe. So the only question that's really left here at the end of the day is, what's left, is what is left to do? What else do we need as a community to be able to achieve? In the last five years, we've been able to, for governments to work with community members in ways that have never been able to be done before. So what does it look like in the next five years? And how can people, whether or not your government or non-government, can come together to improve society? And it's going to start here. There's a great amount of promise that goes forward, but that's the question that's going to be facing all of us. All right, that's my time.